All right, let me get started. Um, if you didn't hear already, you can uh, please add your name and any agenda items to the meeting notes in the Zoom chat. I think everyone probably got the notice this meeting is being recorded. It'll be posted to the CNCF YouTube and the Telecom user group playlist. It's a once a month meeting for the user group. And following this meeting, uh, which is actually every Monday, is a, the CNF uh, working group. Um, does anyone have any additional agenda items I'd like to add if you're not able to see the doc or verbalize or put something in the chat? Um, I haven't heard anybody is, are y'all able to hear me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we're just quiet. All right. <laughs> okay. I can, no I can hear you, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Seven minutes of quiet. All right. So let's see. If anyone has any interesting um, KubeCon in a, in a or ONES, um, track our events. They should be coming out this week. Uh, keep in mind, you could drop them in here so that folks will see those and be aware of things that are interesting to our community. And with that, um, I'll hand it over to, um, is it Nagia, Pam? Yes, yes, Nagia. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I will, if I can unshare and you can share your screen if you'd like. Sure. Yep. Thank you. This E to E demo. Hello. Uh, yes, I can hear you and I can see the screen share. Okay. Let me open the slides first. All right. This is about uh, CNF deployments. Correct. All right. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes, and it's full screen on the slides. Okay. So yeah, good morning, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Phan Zangia, and uh, I'm glad to be here to share with the community, our community, um, yeah, about this um, demonstration. This is the end-to-end -end LTE network, CNF, deployed on the Kubernetes infrastructure. Um, yeah, there are two tasks um, in regarding to this. Yeah, the first one is to deploy uh, the whole end-to-end -end, uh, LTE network onto uh, the Kubernetes infrastructure. And the next one, that is to do some advanced configuration in the 4G network. And this uh, is the network slicing. And it is to see how the Kubernetes behave and support um, the complicated configuration inside the K8S. Okay, so I move on to the setup of the demo. Um, I'm just using um, the virtual box virtualization. And you can see there, I'm using two VM uh, inside the virtual box infrastructure. Uh, for the Kubernetes infrastructure, I'm using uh, the Rancher platform to install the Kubernetes. And then after that, um, we have the Docker. The CNI is Calico. 
for the CNF itself, um, I'm using the Hamchot repo from OpenVersal. And that's uh, very brief information for the setup of this demo. For the LTE uh, network functions, uh, EPC, uh, including the MME, X gateway, P gateway, I'm using open 5GS. And the same for the HSS and PCIF, I'm also using open 5GS. For the EUNCHAN or the RAN network, the e -Node B and the UE is from the SRS RAN. So as you can see on the screen, the whole LTE network is, is on the left hand side of the picture. So that's um, the brief information for uh, how we set up the lab. Um, let's, I think, yeah, jump right into the live demo. Um, okay, here is um, the one that I introduced. Um, so the two notes is here. Uh, inside the Kubernetes, I have a list of namespace already. One of that just created. That's the demo 4G. This is also the one uh, on the left hand side here in the GUI. Um, what we're going to do, we will uh, deploy the EPC packet core part first. So, in order to do that, uh, we choose application and marketplace. It's here already. And uh, the open virtual repository is added before. If you want to add um, this repository, it's, it's very quick and easy. Just go to the chart repos repository, and then you add this repository inside. And then up we go. So inside this, there will be a list of open source, a telecom application for packet core, for RAM, for 4G and 5G. What we need uh, in this demo is the open 5G S. So I pick this one and I choose the namespace I want and I name it. Paco three. For the values um, here, I need to change a little bit uh, the MCC and the MNC, the key parameter defining uh, the, the telco network. So I need to change this to 001 for the MCC and 01 for the MNC for the MME. I will do the same for the AMF. This is uh, yeah, for it to match with the, this uh, parameter of the RAN network later on. And for the other parameter, I just keep the default value. Hit install. On the command line, we can also see yeah, and monitor the resources being created. So there's a list of resources now being created. I just display the port only. In the ham chart window, the updated information for this resources creation is also updated. Almost, all right. Um, there's one thing I need to tweak a bit. I realize this, this is the new thing just uh, added uh, in the latest release of the open 5GS. Uh, that's uh, there's one container. Uh, it's, it's not up and running uh, fully yet. What I need to do, 
I go to the deployment. I change one parameter here. Let me double check if it's okay now. Look like it's good. Okay, it's good. I don't need to change anything. Um, next. Okay, so now you can see in uh, the mention uh, namespace, demo 4G, uh, huge list of network function or the CNF just created uh, using that ham chart. Um, we need to expose the service of the HSS. We need the HSS GUI because we have to do uh, or to add uh, information for the uh, subscriber we need. So we want to see this GUI and it is it's now not exposed yet. So I need to do that now. This is just the normal task in the Kubernetes. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with this. It is nothing fancy here. All right, now we have the node part of the HSS. And uh, HSS is the database node of the EPC packet core 4G network. So it, it's important for us to subscribe our UE. We will go to this one. We know the node port is 31288. Something wrong with this one. Just wait a bit. Three, one, two, eight, eight. Okay, let me try the other note. We have two notes. Okay, there might be yeah something wrong with the first note. Let me check. Okay, looks okay. But if I use the note, the first note, it it's hang. So never mind. We just use another note. Okay. So inside this one, uh, we have this uh, information for the UE already. Uh, it, it's just the database uh, we need to add or config in order um, to make sure that the UE is registered into the EPC network. So this information needs to be subscribed. So the EMZ and the key and, and the OPC also uh, slides configuration. So the first one, um, yeah, this one, it's, um, yeah, for one one zero 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 one one. the first UE is added. So that's it for the core part. Uh, for the radio part, we will initiate the E node B and the UE uh, 
also uh, inside that open vessel ham chart. And we choose the SIS LTE. There's also other enode B, but I choose SIS LTE. I choose the namespace, the same namespace that I use for the EPC. So I name this one um, denote the UE Internet one one. The important thing here, we need to make sure that uh, this uh, key information that I mentioned when I open the HSS window, MZ key and OPC must match. So I need to key in that here. Okay, it's a bit weird when I am in the sharing mode, uh, I could not call uh, the other window easily. So I think, I mean, I mean, the moment you turn the OE and it initiates with the CM connection mode or registration mode and looking at the equipment that you use through the EMEI or through the Mac and then, you know, checks on the registration, you know, you're using IMSI or MSI SDN. Yeah. But you're looking for the SBI, that's SUPI and, you know, SUSI and, uh, you know, GUTI and then also you have some other things related to the PCA or the UPF and um, different modes like idle and connected or inactive. And it's also a little bit, you know, how the PCA is actually deployed and the interaction from the PCA or the UPF, you know, GTPU and the different PDU sessions, you know, the formats and the translation, but all this will cause to you some delays and all these that you have, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yep, go ahead. It's actually serving. You have to fulfill certain requirements to particular services. And you'll be talking about slices and currently there are five standardized categories. Uh, yeah, I think you have I, machine, yeah, I would come to that. Yeah, I think, yeah. And it, then you have high performance machine it. type of communication. And then, you know, the RRC will provide you with the NSAI. And then the UE can support up to S NSSAI. So now, a little bit back, all these configurations, could you please be so kind to share which service category this is implemented for? And could you please be so kind to share how do you actually meet the specified 5QI or the quality of service identifier, which is specified? I will come to that. One okay. of the categories in subservices. Hey, okay. hey. Yeah, I will come to that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. I hope I have enough time, <laughs> but I will come to that. It is, it is the first step. All right. Yep. Okay, we continue. So, yep, we need to um, do the configuration at the radio side after we do the configuration at the headset set. So let me copy all of these key information in order to initiate the enode B and the UE. Okay, MZ key. and OPC. Uh, let me see if anything else needed to be changed. No, good enough. Okay, I hit install. Yep, this guy is up and running. The first, uh, it'll be an UE called Internet 1.1. One, one. Um, it's up and running. So right now, if you go 
to the MME window. Let me see. Yeah, this one, MME. If we go to the logs, view the logs of the MME, we see that it's up and running, but um, it hasn't has had the connectivity with the, the UE and the ENOB yet. So what we need to do, we need to change uh, the uh, IP address uh, inside this ENOB here. Yeah, we need to use that in the config map for this one, one one, remember one one. Edit the config and we need the IP address of the MME. Here I choose um, the cluster IP, IP address of the MME because it's less changing than the container itself. So it's 1043.230.37. We need to keep- I just interrupt very, very quickly, but uh, can I make a quick suggestion? Uh, we've also deployed Open 5GS and uh, you could use Kubernetes services with DNS. So you do not have to use the hard-coded cluster IPs. You can let Kubernetes cloud natively manage those IPs for you and have them connect by DNS. That works. Okay, yep, yep, thank you. Yeah. It it, yeah, it sounds good. But um, yeah, how about if we have the E node B or the G node B uh, yeah, outside of the, the cluster? We still have to do this manually. Is it? Is it okay? Okay, never mind. Were you asking a question for Tal there on the manual or someone else? No, yeah. Hello, Tal. Yeah, there are some comments yeah, from someone. And then I asked him back. But uh, yeah, there, there was no response from him. Oh, sure. It's okay. If you if you if you want to connect it somewhere externally, I thought you were trying to connect the internal components. Uh, but yeah, still, I would recommend using uh, Kubernetes services. That's exactly what they're for. For uh, because the pods can come and go, <laughs> and the IP addresses can change. Uh, yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, the point here is if if um, we have to do the configuration of the IP address. Um, at the e node B, uh, then it might be uh, in the other uh, network, right? It can be the bare meter. So we still need to do the configuration of the IP address for the e node B to reach out to the MME. If if uh, the NF or the container is inside the Kubernetes, like a HSH or AMF or the other NF, then it, it's okay to use the service name. But if uh, the network functions or the elements is, is outside of the Kubernetes, then normally we, we will have to key in the IP address manually. But yeah, yeah let's hope if, if uh, I guess, yeah, later on or in, in the real life configuration, we can have some kind of automation tool um, to do that for us. But yeah, anyway, for the purpose of the demo, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this right now. So I save this one and in order for uh, the change to take effect, I will redeploy this one. You can see that um, the old Inobi is being terminated. And at the same time, we see uh, the reaction from the MME. The, M the MME is, is um, the control plane elements interfacing uh, a couple of other network elements, including the G node B, not the E node B. So let's see uh, if uh, the E node B is up and running, it, it, will, it will talk and it will attach with the MME.
Okay, so the E node B is accepted and the IP address of the E node B is 10, 42, 44, 83. And this is the one that we just created 10, 42, 44, 83. So this is the one. And right now uh, the UE then will also uh, ask the MME to attack. And you see the MZ that we we config at the HSH ending with one one, it just asks the, the MME for the attachment and the MME talk with the HSH and if everything is okay, authenticated and information is match, then it is accepted. So now the connectivity between the e B, the UE and the MME or the packet core EPC is, is okay. We can check the actual connectivity of the UE. So right now the UE is assigned with a context represented by an interface and this interface we have the UE to reach out to the outside world. Let's ping using this interface. Google.com. And it's true. So um, that's uh, kind of very basic deployment of a complete uh, LTE network, including EPC, a CNF, and Inopi e or the BTS, and it is okay now. Any questions so far? And and yeah, any more comments? Um, uh, I'll just come in quickly. Uh, a bunch of people are working uh, on the same thing at Red Hat. Uh, myself and my colleague are here. I'm going to share a repository in the chat <laughs> of some of my work with Open 5GS, where you can build it from source and deploy to Kubernetes. Um, I don't have an EPC, uh, you know, be connected quite yet, but my colleague Jose here, I think, uh, does. Maybe he can share something more. Uh, but otherwise, I wanted to ask you if you could introduce yourself. We didn't get a, a real sense of uh, who you are, where you're coming from, and what this, uh, what the context of this work is. Really? Uh, would you? Yeah, in 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 the first uh, place, I think I did have a introduction. Huh? This one. It is me. I'm 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 here. I'm in uh, the telecom, uh, yeah, industry. Yeah, my name is Phạm Giang here. Is that okay? <laughs> that, that's good. I was hoping for more. <laughs> but uh, you're working for an organization. Yeah, I'm, a, yeah. Or... I'm in. The telecom uh, yeah, industry, I'm, I'm working for the telecom vendor, but I'm here <laughs> as my your personal interest because you see, uh, yeah, I'm using uh, uh, yeah, a lot of open source uh, yeah, software. So, yep, it's, it's, it's my interest and uh, I'm here um, with my personal interest. <laughs> okay. Um, so if if I may, I will I will share with you uh, a few uh, a few repos that here in Red Hat uh, we've been working on related with uh, with this demo. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that would, yeah, that so before be we switch before we switch over to show something else, are there any specific questions for Gia about what he's given so far? Well, I have a question uh, about the demo itself. So in this case, um, the antenna is uh, based on the USRP technology. Is, is that uh, the case? I don't get the question. Uh, yeah, could you repeat? Uh, yeah, if you, if you are using some sort of uh, software defined radio technology to do this demo. Uh, Hang on. Okay. Yeah. You see, um, as I said, um, the e B is uh, SIS run the same with the UE. SIS is the open source. And inside this one, yeah, there's the emulated uh, 
run hardware in order for it to do some kind of uh, emulated uh, um, insight yep in order to reach to the epc that's yeah. the answer is that okay yeah yep um we can also see the logs for the ue and the enode b it's it's here um i'm 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 not the expert of the run uh, enode b here but uh, here is the information inside the logs of the enode b and you can see there there's some more parameters there frequency or parameters or yep okay then i will move on to the slicing uh yeah, if, if we do the slicings, then we'll be more uh, uh, your configuration for that. Um, let me, okay, first. Yep, I need to change some configuration inside. Um, the config map of the XMF and the UPF, the network function that's uh, handling the slicings or, or the networking information of the EPC or LTE network. So what I need to do, I need to scale down this NF first. In the meantime, we go to the config map and we go to the SMF. I pick up the SMF and I go to edit it because for slicing, more network information needed to be added. So I remove this one and I prepare uh, its configuration here already. It's, it's, nothing too big uh, just just to add uh, the network functions for more slides here into the config map okay and then i save it We need to do the same for the PCF. PCF is, is the P gateway. Where is it? Uh, no, the UPF, I'm sorry. UPF. Remove this. Okay, I save it. So I, we need to scale up these uh, network function back to apply the new configuration. Okay, they're up and running with a new configuration. Now um, we go to Oh, this one it better. 
So here uh, I add uh, three more UEs for three more slides. Let me see. Okay, so the UE ending with two one, I put it in the slice IOT and it is matched with the configuration that I mentioned that I added into the SMF and the UPF just now. So this is the new slice or a new network. Yep, of course, uh, this is the 4G and it is not as full as the 5G network slicing, but it is one just the simple view of the network slicing in the 4G network in order to yeah, differentiate um, the traffic or the type of traffic we want. In, in the real life, this um, yeah, parameter might be customized depending on your use case. It can be IoT, it can be uh, edge, your yeah, mobile edge computing or ML, MRLLC. Low latency, uh, no, URLLC, ultra reliable and low latency uh, communication. Or it can be even AI, ML, industrial automation and so on. But um, yep, I will keep this the full value as it is. So uh, the next UE is is for the H. We will choose that in the H slice or DNN. And the final one, the four one. I name it your slice. It's up to you. Um, to spin up your own type of slides that uh, yeah, fulfill your requirement. It can be also your own your private LTE 4G network. So because we have um, these information at the HSS already, we go back to the RAN part. for the RAN. I also installed uh, these three additional e -Node B already. And it is the same way that I just installed the first one, like this one. The only uh, difference is, is yeah, just it's in another slice and the IMSI is, is different. So I scan up this. E node B. Oh man, I could have changed the IP address. But anyway, that's okay, we can do that now. So this new UE, no, not new, but uh, installed, and it's just up and running. We need to change the IP address also. And 43.230.37. And I will change that for the three one. We need to change that using the config map. Two, Where is the EMZ? Okay, it's good enough. So, save. 
Do the same for the three one. Sip. And the final one, your slides. And as normal, we need to really apply this. Can we watch um, the reaction at the MME? Because as long as this new UE will be up and running with the right uh, MME IP address, it will do the attachment with the MME. Yes, the first UE, the second UE, and let's wait for the other to finish. And after the, the E node B is, is accepted, then the UE will be authenticated and then attached. Uh, a quick question. How do you manage uh, certificates for authentication, for the demo at least? Um, it's, it's not kind of the certificate, but uh, yeah, between the HSSH and the UE, there's, there's special authentication method. It's, it's, it's used very, even more complex than the certificate, but it is also two ways, mutual. That it will use the IMZ, um, in order to authenticate, and it, it it's it's quite uh, complex. And uh, uh, another question related with uh, with the previous one: um, What are you using uh, to manage uh, certificates required for diameter protocol between? Uh, the HSS, the MME, and the PCRF. Good question. I think it is the internal, um, yeah, inside the Open 5GS. I haven't checked if if they use uh, that yet. Because, I have an answer. Yep. Um, it, it uses a diameter internally and uh, using the free diameter project. And indeed there it uses TLS, uh, standard TLS certificates for authentication internally. Okay. Yep, thank you. So that's um, the UE, right? These, yeah, these UE are the config inside these, uh, its own special slides. And uh, let's go to H to see if it's really connected. So you see this is the uh, UE21, and it is the site inside this network. Uh, it, is, it is the same or it is matched with what we config uh, inside the, S, um, the SMF here. For the IoT. So this guy can ping the internet. Let's ping VN Express. Okay, it could not ping yet. There's one more thing we need to do. 
and that's the NAT. Right now, it could not ping uh, to the outside yet because at the UPF, we need to do the NAT yeah, from the UPF to the outside world for this new slide or APN that we added before. So we need to add all of these to the new network or APN into the UPF. I go to the UPF here. I go to the container, open it. See, there's a list of interfaces. It is kind of the, the gateway for um, the interfaces or the network that we created, but uh, it, it, it hasn't been up yet. We need to add this or config uh, this information into this. And now it's up and the ping is through. So yeah, it is the kind of very uh, basic configuration for the network slicing in 4G. I think it, it, it's a bit um, yeah, complicated for the, the telecom network, but um, it is trust yeah, to show that um, the slicing configuration, uh, the advanced configuration, yeah, how is it handled in the Kubernetes and native cloud infrastructure? Do, and do, you have any, do you have any configuration for the NAS from the UE traversing MME towards the application server for the IoT and implementing on the control plane, the NIDD? No, this is, yeah, this is only for the UE um, to be connected to the UPF and then yeah, from the UPF to the outside world. We don't have any application uh, server here for the IoT nor for the edge or for, for, um, yeah, for any other slice network yet. It is just, if it is through to the internet, then uh, it is, it is yeah, up to the application or the use case. It is not uh, to install the application server. Is that, is that uh, what but you mean? Can you, can you configure for the SSC mode one to three on the UPF for the PDU session or PCA? I haven't tried that yet. Okay. Mm. So we can do the same for the other uh, UE. Uh, we check for the UE in the slice IoT or APN I, IoT already. We can check the same for the slide edge. Here you see the network for the slide edge is, is this one. It's aligned with what we set in the UPF and what we set in the SMF. H is in this network. So this UE is assigned with this. And inside the UPF, that is the gateway, um, the TAN3 is the gateway of that H slice here. That's the gateway. And this one is IP address of the UE. And it How are the devices set up, those additional devices like the 10 device? I'm, I'm sorry? Are the, the uh, it looks like you have additional interfaces? Yes, correct. At the UE, huh? Yeah, so how are those set up? Are those, is that part of Open 5GS like automated or how do you, how does that done? Um, okay, it is, uh, okay, look, um, it will attack with the MME, right? Because the MME is the first uh, representative that it, it can talk to. And then after that, uh, it is um, yeah, authenticated. And once it is accepted, it will ask the SMF, the SMF to assign the network for it. So the SMF will assign the, the network, which is in the UPF for this UE. I mean, do you have also support for the, on the UE? Those, the service yeah, those are the, yeah, those are the, 
the telecom um, your protocol. Yep, it 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 will be handled by the telecom network. Mm. All right. It's, um, it's, yeah, it's the same with 2G, 3G, uh, 4G. There will be um, the network functions inside the EPC or the core network. And that will be responsible for assigning the PDP contacts or the interface that we just saw in the UE like this, right? If, if we create a new enode B, there will be no a TAN interface, but only if it is attached with the EPC and with the right network, with the right MNC, mobile country code and mobile network code. And once after it is authenticated by the HSH, that would be a sent to the SMF and the UPF. And those guys will be responsible for assigning network interface for this UE, as long as they are configured at the HSH. I want to do a quick time check. We got three minutes. Um, does anybody have questions? Gia? No, no, no. Good for me. Any comments or questions about all this? <clears throat> um, yep, yeah, I see that. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's some comment from the chart uh, about the new repository that uh, shared by the Red Hat team, right? Yeah, I think it, it's it's good that uh, we can have that and we can also check, um, especially in the end-to-end -end, uh, environment or context, then I'm, I'm glad and I would try that. Yeah, thank you for that. This Thanks, one. Gia. Um, does someone want to... Does anyone have any other, I guess, final comments? And then like the this Red Hat posted uh, kind Kate's um, from Jose or Tal, do y'all want to put something on the agenda for next month? Uh, we were there. actually just discussing among ourselves. We might have something uh, something also to demonstrate. It, it, it could be similar to this, but different. We, we uh, the definition of end to end is, is might be different for, for us. Uh, I'll just quickly mention, you know, we're all using upstream projects, uh, open 5GS. Uh, if anybody's more interested in how this all works as a 5G core, uh, or it, it also supports 4G core, uh, sorry, 4G EPS, uh, you can just go to their website and see the work that they're doing. We're, what we're doing is merely packaging it and uh, making it uh, more cloud native for uh, Kubernetes. Uh, Tal, would you show anything on the SCP service communication proxy for the inter-UPF on N9 using SCPP also? Anything, you know, for the service session continuity mode one to three in the, depending on the UPF selection and reselection, depending on the location of the UPF, I, that's a very, very interesting point you're getting into that it technically it, it ends up being quite difficult because of the way that open 5GS uses SCTP. Uh, right. I don't know if you know, but SCTP is kind of a new thing in Kubernetes. It's just recently gotten support. However, it's up to your containers to really do it. The problem is that uh, open 5GS uses a few different upstream uh, open source libraries. Uh, and some of them use kernel mode SCTP, some of them allow user mode SCTP. There are a lot of challenges in running kernel mode SCTP in uh, uh, Kubernetes. So what, what ends up happening is that we've actually, instead of SCTP, I've been playing around with using uh, just TCP instead, which is a plain TCP, which is what uh, Open 5GS supports. So I, I personally don't have complete open SCTP running. Uh, what about you, Jose? Have you managed to get it? Hey, we're at time. Anyone that wants to continue yeah. can here. Uh, I'm going to be dropping for the CNF working group, which starts right now. Thanks, everyone. Uh, see you all next month. Yep, thank you. Thank you.
Thanks. Bye.